Hello students, this is Money and Public Finance, Program BCom, Subject Economics, Semester 2nd, University Mangalore, Session 13. Quantity Theory of Money, Cambridge Version or Demand Theory of Money. When Fisher was developing his equation of exchange in America, Marshall, Pigou, Robertson, Keynes, etc. at the Cambridge University popularized the classical Cambridge cash balance approach to the quantity theory of money. The cash balance version was based on the store of value function of money. According to the cash balance approach, the value of money is determined by the demand for and supply of money. It considers the demand for and supply of money at a particular point of time. Since supply of money at a particular point of time is fixed, it is the demand for money which accounts for the changes in the price level. The demand for money arises because of its being store of value. The real demand for money comes from those who want to hold it for various motives. In the Cambridge approach, the demand for money implies demand for cash balances. Cash balance is that proportion of real income which the people decide to hold in the form of money. The total demand for money of the economy is a certain proportion of its annual real national income which the community wants to hold in the form of money. After recognizing the importance of so many factors on demand for money, the Cambridge economists simplified the demand for money function by assuming the demand for money holding MD as a constant proportion of K of money income Py. Thus, the Cambridge equation is MD is equal to KPY. The Cambridge equation. The Cambridge economists explained their cash balance approach to the quantity theory of money by formulating equations known as Cambridge equations. Marshallian equation is expressed as M is equal to KPY. M is the quantity of money that is currency plus demand deposits. P is the price level. Y is aggregate real income. K is a proportion of the real income which people decide to hold in the money form. In the equation, price level is P is equal to M divided by PY. The value of money 1 divided by P is 1 divided by P is equal to KY divided by M. The cash balance approach implies that the price level P is directly proportional to the money supply M and indirectly proportional to the aggregate real income Y and the proportion of real income which individuals choose to keep in the form of money K. M and Y being constant, P falls with the increase in K and P rises with the decrease in K. Similarly, K and Y remaining unchanged if M increases, P rises and if M decreases, P falls. These conclusions of the cash balance approach are shown as in the figure. In the figure, M dash S and M S are money supply. M D is equal to K P Y. M dash D is equal to K P Y are the demand for money. A is initial equilibrium point. An increase in money supply from M S to M dash S will create an excess supply of money at the old income level. As a result, individuals will 
rid themselves of excess money balances by increasing their spending on goods. As a result, price level rises and the nominal income increases. Similarly, given the money supply, MS, increasing demand for money will create excess supply of money which in turn will increase spending on goods increasing the price level and the nominal income level. Thank you.